Welcome, Rexburg, to today's episode of the Rexburg Hustle. We are excited that you're here with us today. We have a great guest that we cannot wait to introduce to you. How are things going outside, Rick? What's what's the weather doing like today? You know what? It's been raining. It has, yeah. And yeah. stormy, but yeah. it's good. The you rivers know, are full. The rivers are full, which yeah. for some of us that like to be on the rivers, that's a good thing. Yeah. Travis uh, was already on the river in I his dry suit. Twice. So, yeah, yeah, that's pretty intense. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we are. So we're excited for spring to come. So rain's going to pass. It'll come, and we're excited about that. But we want to introduce uh, our, our new guest after first. Who are we going to spotlight today? Well, if you guys will look up in here in our TV screen, you'll see a little ladder here. And you'll see something called Rexburg Signs. And there's Caesar right there, actually, on our live stream. Caesar is actually outside putting up our banner for the Rexburg Hustle right now. So our spotlight this week, guys, is Rexburg Signs. If you guys do not know who they are, they do uh, signs, they do graphics, they do vehicle wraps, they do business cards, they do brochures, they do stickers, they do books. I they think do, they even do like ATVs and, and motorsports they, they stuff. Do, yeah, so they do wraps everything. on those. Those guys yeah. do everything. So yeah. Caesar is out front right now. You can see him on our live cam, on our Main Street cam. He is out there putting up our giant Rexburg hustle sign right now. So really, really excited about that. And we are grateful for Caesar and all the great work that he does. He is a fantastic person, a great member of our community, and uh, and runs a fantastic business. So thank you, Rexburg yeah, Signs. Absolutely. Well, we sure appreciate you tuning in today. We have a great guest that we want to introduce. Uh, her name is Tracy Barney. In 2005, her life changed when she took her first foreign exchange student into her home. We want to welcome Tracy to come on and talk to us about her experience and what she does. Yeah, guys, as Tracy's walking up, um, if you guys have any questions or any comments, uh, feel free to put those in the comments and we'll, uh, we can dedicate a couple minutes That's at the right. end um, to, uh, to answering any live questions from our audience. So, um, but anyway, Tracy, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Yeah. Thank so, you for having me. Yeah. So tell us what happened in 2005. So in 2005, we received a phone call on a Wednesday and uh, asking us if we would be willing to take a foreign exchange student from Taiwan. Oh. He was 15 years old, and uh, we agreed to do that. And within um, the next week on Tuesday, he arrived here. That fast? That fast. Wow. Well, it, was the, it was the end of the school, or the end of the placement season. And so th that happens when we're at the very last students that we need to Place. 15 years old. Is that the common age that you'll see um, a foreign exchange student come over? Sometimes they come from ages 15 to 18. 15 to 18. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and what brings them to the area? What how yeah, what brings them to the area? Well, it, exchange students want to come over here because they um, want to improve their English mm -hmm. um, and it also looks good on their resume. Interesting. What the school systems? How how are they received into the local school systems? The school systems are awesome. They allow them to be a teenage and American teenager. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Very exciting. Now, Very thinking, cool. Um, so I, I'm, I'm assuming that when you heard you were bringing someone from Taiwan into your home, um, you, I'm assuming you have other kids? Mm hmm Okay. How, what was that feeling like, I guess, before he came for your family? Mm -hmm. um, was it, were you guys nervous? Was it scary? Were you guys just uh, excited? I mean, how, how was that? Taking an exchange student in. We were very excited. Okay. It was mm -hmm. it was another son. My my oldest son was the same age. Okay. When he came. Wow. And that helps. Yes. That really helps to have someone the same age uh, to be able to pal around and do different things. Yes. Wonderful. So back in 2005, you you brought in the exchange student, and then, um, you know, we've we've had a. This is actually our. Um, anyway, we've talked about this before with her, but a few years later, you actually took a position with the company that places these students. Is that correct? Yes, I did. Yeah, tell us about that. Okay, so um, my third year of hosting exchange students, um, we actually started um, hosting two at a time. Okay, wow. That's fun. Mm. Um, anyway, we had a Taiwanese uh, and a Thailand girl. Okay. And the Thailand girl was like a mixed from both companies. And the other company wouldn't allow her to be part of the um, organization to do all of the activities, go on the trips and things. Yeah. And so I became a coordinator because I love the foreign exchange. So, and you're still do it today. So how many, how many students have you hosted in your own house? Uh, I have hosted 30 exchange students in my own house. Well, that's great. Wow. 30 exchange students. Mm -hmm. Great experiences so far. Yes. Very good yeah. experiences. Yeah. Overall, not just the ones that you've, that you've hosted, but how many students have you worked with to place homes for? I've, I've host I've placed around a total of 300. Well, that's great. That's wow. great. 300 wonderful 300. experiences. Yeah. <laughs> that's wonderful. And, and I guess, are they 
overall, or have they been wonderful experiences for the majority of people who take in exchange students? For those families. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. they, they've been a great experience. Um, there have been a few. And when, and when we do have issues, it's normally um, personality conflict. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. It, homesickness, things like that. Home, homesickness that, uh-huh. yeah. And homesickness is usually when we've, I've sent maybe five home okay. and it, and it is for that, for homesickness or allergies. Um, remember one year we had the really bad fires here. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Right. I had right. an exchange student here from, uh, Switzerland, I believe. And oh, wow. she, she couldn't it's, breathe. That's, those are my roots. Yeah, really? Yeah, she, Switzerland roots. She, could, she couldn't breathe. And you have so allergies, too. And yeah. I do have allergies. And she had <laughs> allergies really bad. <laughs> that's, I well. must get those from Switzerland then. <laughs> so, so the ratio of, of the students that come and those that go home for whatever reason is very, very low. Yes, it is very low. That's great. That's great. So, I work with you through the I work with you through the, the program uh-huh. um, so that if there is an issue, then I help with the communication with mm-hmm. that so and i was just going to ask you kind of take us through that process of somebody saying okay i want to take a family or i i guess are they reaching out to you or is are you kind of having to sell people on it and then <laughs> and yeah. then once that happens whether they call or you have to sell them what is that process like to Good get question. an exchange yeah. student okay so very rarely do i get a phone call asking me if they can ha- take a foreign exchange student why do you and think I, that is i think it's because people aren't aware of what the program is about mm-hmm. they think that it's uh, bringing a, a teenager into their home um so what happens is, is that we find a family that's willing to take a student mm-hmm. um and i like the, the family to choose the student so i give them uh, three or four uh profiles uh-huh. to look at um you have to fill out an application you have to do background check on everybody that's 18 and older in your home mm-hmm. um then i come and do an interview with you um you also uh give me two references that i contact mm-hmm. and then we've and obviously have I, i've already spoken with the school and they've given us permission for the student to be there are, are the students overall pretty accepting i i know you know in other areas of the country um, you know, there's a lot of cliques, a lot of, um, even gangs at schools and things like that. But in our school districts here in, in our area, have the students accepted, um, people from other countries and different backgrounds, have they been accepted overall pretty well, or, or is it kind of a struggle for these kids to fit in? At the beginning, it is hard. Is it? Okay. Because, you know, most of the kids here have grown up from kindergarten up. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but they do welcome them. It takes yeah. a little bit of time. Um, but the kids that come here, the foreign exchange students, they don't really even want to go home. They want to really? stay here. What, what do you think is their biggest challenge when they first come here to the U.S.? Well, the, one of the biggest challenges is um, transportation. Oh, okay. Sure. Because sure. in their country, they can get on a bus, they can get on a train, mm. they can do whatever. But here they are, um, the families, they're, they're having to haul them and take them wherever, you know what I mean? And they're right. not used to that. Yeah. Right. Right. You know, and I assume when these students are over there saying, oh, my gosh, I'm going to sign up for this program. I'm going to go to the U.S. I'm sure they're thinking Hollywood. They're thinking New York City. They're thinking, you know, all these different places. And then they go to potato country. Um, <laughs> I'm sure this isn't really the America, the vision of America that they have. Maybe it is. But is it, you know, when they get here, are they kind of like, oh, wow, this isn't what I expected? Or are they pretty like, OK, this is kind of what I thought it would be. Do, do they choose that? Do they? When they come to Rexburg, do they look on the map of the available areas and say, I want to go here, or do they just get assigned? They can choose to okay. pick where they want to go, but they have to pay extra money for that. Oh. So otherwise, they get put wherever we find a family. Interesting. Wow. And, and and that's anywhere in the U.S.? Yes. Okay. And it's usually in the rural areas that we put. So if someone is put in uh, New York, it's not in the big city New York. Oh, it's outside really? of. Mm-hmm. Why is that? Um, because I think in the big cities that their housing availability, uh, availability uh-huh. is not so good. So, you know what I mean? They have little, they stay in hotel or apartments and things like that. Sure. So that's, that's why. Interesting. Okay. I didn't know that. Now, yeah. um, what, oh my gosh. I'll, I'll I had tell a great you question. What. You go. You Sorry. know, um, I, I had the chance, let me rephrase this. <laughs> my family had the chance to participate in this very program this last year, um, and, and we had a great experience. Um, I don't, should I tell the story, or do you want to tell the story how this thing happened? You can. You okay, can. so here's the deal. <laughs> here's how this went down. 
Um, my daughter was working at the at the Nielsen's Custard uh, <laughs> restaurant here in town when it was here, and uh, and Tracy came in and uh, was at, w- at the counter and was asking, uh, "Hey, do you know anyone who wants to host a host a, a foreign exchange student?" And my daughter from the back raised her hand, and says, "We will, we will." And so <laughs> I guess I she came home that night and said, "Guess what we're doing, family? We're going to host a, a, a foreign exchange student." And I said. We are okay, and it kind of <laughs> happened literally just like that. I remember Travis coming it, to the office the next day, telling me, "I guess we're uh, having an exchange student." I come. guess I like, have okay. six okay. kids now. I don't know what <laughs> just happened, but but we did, and so yeah, that leap of faith of the unknown and going, "Okay, I guess we'll do this. Why not?" Uh, started the pr- the process for us, and and we met with Tracy, and she told us about uh, what to expect, how to proceed um, went through the whole thing and it was very reassuring that this is a very solid and good program and I'll tell you what we wouldn't have changed it for the world um, the exchange student that we had was from Italy a little town called Forte de Marme and uh, and she was just a sweetheart she was one of our daughters did everything with the family went everywhere we went whether it, anyway everywhere and it was just dynamic Even family pictures. Even family (laughs) pictures. We literally have a nice, huge family picture on our wall with her in it, and we we just love her to death. It was great. Is this the typical experience of of what people see? Yes. It is? Yes, it is. So why is it you think that people are are so timid about doing it? I think people are, um, because they're not aware of the program, and they think bringing another teenager on, Mm-hmm. And most people have larger families sure. and they're busy in the community and they have um, activities with their own children. Mm-hmm. And so it, it does make it easier if you pick a student that is involved in sports or something, music or whatever your kids in are in. Yeah, something yeah. in common. So then you're only and, and it helps the bonding, too. Well, sure. that's exactly what happened with us. And so my oldest daughter and Kiara were the exact same age. And she, my daughter drove, so they went where they needed to go and did what they needed to do, go to school together, same hour, same time, shared the same room. It was it was really pretty smooth. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it didn't overcomplicate uh, anything in our home that wasn't already going on. It was great. Yeah. yeah. Now, we talked a little bit before the show the other day Um you know, that, that there's areas that are a little more open to it than other areas and some that are a little more closed off. What are some of the areas that, um, you know, some of the communities that really kind of embrace it and welcome it? And what are, who are some of the communities that are a little bit more closed to it? Well, I think all communities are a little closed to are it. They? I okay. mean, they'll, you can it's get the unknown. Few, it's, it's, it's the unknown. unknown. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. it is the unknown. And it's, um, that's the thing that I want to be able to do is to share with the community um, that this is a great program and you're not signing on for 10 months. Um, and if it doesn't work out for you, that you're stuck with the, the student. You can move around. I will. If, if things are not mm-hmm. working out between the host family or the student, mm-hmm. they're not stuck, have to duke it out yes. or, or endure it. It's They call you and you make some changes. Yes. That's yes. easy. Mm-hmm. Can we have some fun? Yes. Okay. <laughs> can Uh-oh. you look right at camera two? Which is this middle camera. Yes. I want to hear your sales pitch on taking a, a foreign exchange student. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to hear like just how, because you said sometimes it's a sale, you know, sometimes you really got to sell them on it. I'd love to hear how you do it. I'm totally putting you on the spot. <laughs> oh, I know you are. So fun for us, not for you. <laughs> let, as you're thinking about that, let me have your rock. Oh yeah. So you may see this rock on our desk here, and uh, I want to explain this. This is Rick's rock. That this, is my rock. <laughs> this is this is actually real marble. This marble uh, is quarried in Forte de Marme, where our foreign exchange student Chiara was from. Her dad works in the marble quarries, and a lot of the marble that the uh, that, that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints that that they use in their church buildings and temples and all that is quarried right from her town. And because her dad works there, we were able to take a, a, a guided tour to the top of this mountain. And it's I mean it's a single small single track road up the windiest mountain to the very top where this quarry is and it was amazing getting up there and we watched them cut and fall big 600 ton slabs of marble and cut them up in little Mm. pieces this is just a little fragment of one that i brought home for rick and i got one for my family too but this is the legitimate marble that comes from italy from italy um that 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 we see in some of the local uh, buildings and stuff so that's what this is and i Anyway, I and, wanted to explain that. And Travis said that as he went through airport security, because this was in your backpack? It was in my backpack. When we were up at the <laughs> quarry, I picked up a piece and asked the guy there if I could have that. And he says, yeah, sure, take it home. So I threw it in my backpack. 
thing probably weighs like 20 pounds too. We had That's we had pieces in different suitcases and backpacks and stuff. We brought like eight of them home, but when we were passing through the security, they thought it was a skull. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we had to work through that one. But anyway, so that made the trip more interesting. But uh, absolutely. So, uh, what when, when you're when you're asking a family or proposing this idea, what are the points you bring out? What do you tell them? Well, you know, we begin to ask, like I ask, so, mm-hmm. would you be interested in hosting a foreign exchange student? And usually, I have um, students ready to place. So right mm-hmm. now, um, for instance, I have a girl from Belgium that's 17 years old um, that is looking for a home. Um, and basically I I ask, and sometimes they say we're too busy. Well, you know what? The foreign exchange student loves a busy family. Hmm. That's true. That's true. Some of the friends of Kiara, um, there were, most of them stayed real busy. They had, uh, teenagers and younger families Mm -hmm. and all that. But I think there was one or two that would come to our house and hang out. And I would ask, I I think it was a he, um, I forget where he was from. How's, how's it going? He says, Oh, my host family's a little quiet, little, little, you know, mm-hmm. so he likes to get, get out and be with the other students. So anyway, some of that may happen, but, uh, I, I think that all the foreign exchange students bonded really well. We would have 12 of them at a time at our house. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was a party. But just so you know, too, that there are students that would prefer the family that sits at home and watches TV rather than the one that goes mm. all the time. Okay. So there are personalities both ways. Sure. Oh, interesting. Um, okay. And so they, and the people will tell me, well, we have too many children or, um, the students can share a room with another, uh, student or another child. Mm-hmm. Um, but they have to be somewhat near the same age. Yeah. Um, and if it, they are younger, I think they can be 12 years old, but we have to get permission from their natural family that that's mm-hmm. okay to do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, or if you have little kids, but think about this. Most of the foreign exchange students come and they are either one child or there's two of them. And so then they're excited. They, they all, most of the exchange students love little kids. They love to mm-hmm. be able mm-hmm. to hang with them. Um, and basically I just walk through them and, and really there's, you know, people have to think about it. And I know that the foreign exchange student isn't for everybody, but it is a great opportunity to try and do know that if you, do um, say that you want to and it's not what you expected it to be you're not expected to do this because it's supposed to be a fun program for the student for the family for the school Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. and and we you you won't endure it you'll enjoy it what when you talk to the students or or maybe you don't ask them this question i did to ours but do you ever ask them why do they want to come and do this program what brought them from italy or japan or wherever to some foreign little dinky town that that is known for potatoes. What what made them want to do this? I've asked every I ask all of the students that, uh-huh. and most of them it, it is simply because they want to learn um, their English better, mm-hmm. um, because it is a universal language. Right. And most of the students that do come here, they they know four or five different languages, and English is yeah. Yeah, and and Kiara did our our um, our, our student. She knew I, again. I forget exactly how many, but it was four or five languages that she was really pretty versed in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they um, have it for the resume, and also mm-hmm. some of them just want to come and have the experience yeah. because some of them actually do come back over to the states and they move over here and they become. Mm-hmm. A citizen, so. Oh, we are wow. trying so hard to get ours back. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. You, you yeah. got her back briefly, but then oh. she had to leave again. Yeah, we did. I'll tell you what. Uh, uh, ours was, uh, Kiara, ours, our daughter, <laughs> our, Kiara was such a great pleasure to have in our home um, that we surprised our kids for Christmas. I see that. And uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we didn't tell them anything and it was so hard to, but we actually flew her back for three days and sent her back home because that's all she could be here for. It was reckless. It was crazy. But we brought her home for three days. We had just come back from a family trip to Arizona. It was like 11 o'clock at night. We go through the front door. Everyone's dragging their suitcases in. They're exhausted. And Kiara is hiding around the corner uh, because my mother-in-law brought her to the house from the, from the airport. And everyone's sitting on the couch and exhausted. And guess who pops out? And Merry <laughs> Christmas. It was that was one of the if, best videos if, I've ever seen. If I'm not it careful, I'm going to start tearing up about this one because it was touching. That family reunion was amazing. So when she came back, did you feel like she had never left? Never left. In mm-hmm. fact, I asked her that. I said, how do you feel being back? She says, well, like I never left. Mm-hmm. And it had been wow. a few months. Yeah. yeah. She's like, and having her at the home and listening to her voice and all that was, it was, it was awesome. Yeah. It was awesome. It, it is. It is a great because they are part of your family mm-hmm. yeah. and you are in their parents too and siblings. Well, 
Okay, part of my I, I'm taking the show here, folks. I'm sorry, <laughs> no. but but I, I guess I'm a proponent for what's going on here. And so when Kiara came to live at our home for the school year, we took her back home, and we got to meet her side of the world and her family and her uh, lifestyle and friends and all of that. So I mean, we use that as an excuse for a family trip to go to <laughs> Italy, right? But um, what a great experience it was to get to know their family and and see how they lived and really put the pieces of the puzzle together. And um, I, in fact. It was her birthday yesterday. We just we send her a message. Happy birthday! Yeah, it was great. <laughs> what? Um, uh, just a question that popped in my mind when when these students are coming over. What kind of commitments do they have to make to be able to be in this program? Mm -hmm. um, what kind of commitments? I guess financially, and what kind of commitments do they have to make to stay in the program? Rules so, and things like that. <clears throat> so they have to go, um, and they're tested for their English ability. They're okay. also tested for. Um, different things and they've went through all of their shots and medical mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. So they um, have to be fluent in English before yes. they can come. Yep, okay. they have to because because they have to be able to um, be part of the high school, the okay. American high school. Okay. So they cannot be uh, um, for the teachers to have to work with. They have to be able to to be like an American sure. teenager. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so then they come over here and they are um, they sign a contract both they and their family sign a contract that they have to follow the U.S. rules okay. as well as the school rules. Mm -hmm. And they are also supposed to um, follow the family rules. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And then if that doesn't happen, then that's where I come in. <laughs> Got it. One, one of the things I'll, I'll, I'll recognize here is that when you came to our house and talked to our family with Kiara right there, um, you really encouraged her to minimize the screen time on her phone. Mm -hmm. In today's world, communication, FaceTime, all that is just, you know, push the button. And and you encouraged her to really embrace and get the full experience of, of the of, of what she's trying to do here in the United States. Minimize that, throw yourself full force into your host family, do what they do, communicate with them, mm -hmm. leave mom at home or whatever it is. Um, and that was, I think, real helpful. And that is um, the reason why some students actually go home for being homesick is because you can't really fully be part of Rexburg, Idaho, if you're contacting your family and sure. your friends mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. It yeah. just doesn't work. Makes sense. That does make mm -hmm. sense. Um, a two-part question is, why do you do what you do, and what kind of fulfillment does it bring to you? Oh. I do what I do because I love kids, mm -hmm. and it's fun to meet all of the different cultures and to... I don't know. I, I mm -hmm. have 300 kids out there, you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, and the fulfillment I get out of it is this story that he's just giving now yeah. because I had a connection to, mm -hmm. and it's not only the kids I get to meet, but I get to meet the families in the community right. and I, I stay in contact with them, you know, and yeah. so uh, that's great. What's the biggest struggle in what you do? What's the hardest part about your job? <laughs> the hardest part about my job is finding house families. Is it? It is. Um, it, it, and like I said, I know that it's scary to invite a uh, foreigner into your home, but we're all the same. We really are. We're the same. And did you find that too with Kiara that your kids are, it doesn't matter that she came from Italy, but you're the same. She was one of our daughters with an accent. Yep. That was it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we teased and and she was a joker. She would steal your cell phone and put pictures on it on the, on the screensavers, and she would hide around the corner and scare you. We would have a lot of fun, actually. Yep. We would have a lot of fun there w uh, with her. What a great experience. You know, selfishly, and I've said that, maybe I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to say it. Selfishly, we had such a great experience with our with our student that I don't want to get another one because I don't want to risk what we had. But after all <laughs> we've seen and experienced, and with your stories, I'm confident that if, if when we do it again, it'll just be another wonderful time. Well, and like I told you, you know, nobody's gonna um, replace Kiara's year. That was her year. So yeah. you're gonna have if you choose another student, it'll be their year. It'll be their year. Yep, that's right. So yeah. It, it all works out. I've had 30, and every year, even with the other exchange students that come, there's some that I connect with more than others, but I love them all. Yeah, That's awesome. Now, you know, this is going to go out to several thousand people, and um, if somebody is all of a sudden like, you know, maybe I want to do this. Maybe this is for me. Maybe this is for my family. How can they get a hold of you? How can they become a host right. family? What's the process for that, and, and what do they need to do? Okay, so... Um, one thing also that if you're not interested in being a host family yourself, but you know somebody that might be a friend or a family member or something, we also re, uh, give a, 
hundred dollar referral fee to a family that is referred that isn't paid out until after the students here and they're actually in their home can i officially refer travis green you sure <laughs> okay. can but, he has, but the student has to be there and oh, he has bummer. to be hosting to get it okay. so <laughs> anyway we have a website that you can go to it's www.sharemountainstates.org and there's a phone number it's 866-932 Three seven three eight. So that's share share mountain states states dot org dot org. Mm -hmm. Okay. Share mountain states. Huh. So what's is there a purpose behind that name? Uh, we share the just we share the state. Yeah, we share it. Huh. Lovely. That's awesome. The mountain states is that's our area. Okay. So oh, okay. and, and how big is the area that you guys cover? Well, we cover the whole state of Idaho, but my supervisor, she's in charge of the surrounding states. Okay. So if you know of anybody in the United States, there is we have coordinators throughout the U.S. that yeah. we can hook you up with. Oh, that's, that's great. That's wonderful. Well, we sure uh, uh, appreciate the work that you're doing. And yeah. it is. It is a challenge. And, and certainly we support Tracy and, and everything that she's doing. We've experienced it. We had a great experience. And, and this isn't exactly why we brought her on the show today is to is right. just, just try to bolster what she's doing. But really, truly, this is an experience that people of Rexburg need to have. Yeah. Um, now, yeah, there's a lot of families that have big families and adding one more might just put you over the top in some ways. Mm -hmm. We get that. But what you're going to find, at least we did, and we have five kids of our own, is that she just jumped in and it was a six pair, six pair of hands to help around the house mm -hmm. and a lot more laughter. So really a great thing. Well, and the exchange program changed my life. Um, and I... I love it, and I love the kids, and I love the opportunities that I, I've been given because of being part of it. Well, that's yeah. wonderful. Oh, wonderful. That's great. Anything else you have to say to our audience before we, uh, before we end the show, now that we only have a, a couple minutes left? Yes, I actually do. I have a Belgium girl that is 17 years old that I'm looking for a home for, if anyone is interested in that. I have a Spain boy that's 15 years old. And I have an Italian girl that's 16 that is um, a vegetarian. And by the way, those students are a little harder to place because some people sure. think mm -hmm. it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, if anyone's interested, it is a great, great opportunity. For when? Is it for this next school year yes. or right now or when? Um, I'm actually looking for students right now. And this is for the 2019-2020 uh, school, school year. Okay. So, um, yeah. Okay, perfect. Great. All right. Tracy, thank you so much thank for being you. on the show. Yes. We really appreciate it. And and thank you for all that you do. Thank you for making this program available to the people in, in eastern Idaho, um, especially in Rexburg. Um, again, what a great opportunity. I remember when I was a kid, we had our uh, exchange student, Pinar, from Turkey. And, um, and, and I'll always remember those times of having an exchange student. So thank you. Um, thank you, thank so you for bringing um, cultural diversity to our area, for giving people like Travis's family these amazing experiences, mm -hmm. adding to their family, adding to their, you know, to, to the great experience in, in their life. So um, just applaud what you do. So thank you so much. For yeah, all that thank you, do. you. It's a wonderful thing. Please, please give uh, Tracy a call. Send her an email. Show, uh, just just ex uh, express any questions or, or anything that you have. She'd love to help you. Rexburg, we appreciate you. Uh, episode, episode 7 of the Rexburg Hustle. We are uh, we're ready to wrap things up. We are, guys. Make sure to stay tuned. Next week, we will have the Madison County Fire Chief. Uh, we're excited for some uh, probably some good, crazy stories from him. Ooh, so yes. make sure to tune in uh, this coming Wednesday at 1.30 here on the live stream. Uh, and then afterwards, it'll go into the podcast apps on YouTube. So I uh, hope everybody has a fantastic weekend, and we'll see you guys all next week. Thank you.